let me tell you, this is one of the matches I've been looking forward to. You have Darian Cruz, who won the NCAA championships last year, who's a stud. He goes after everybody. He just had an amazing tournament last year, pulls off, and was Lehigh's 28th national team title. I mean, not team title, individual title. Gave him that 28th one. But Nick and he did Pitch, it as a four seed, too. Yeah. And we, I mean, he beat everyone that was out there. And then you have Nick Piccinini, Big 12 champion as a freshman, and also a four time New York State champion. All American took fourth last year. I mean, just had an amazing freshman campaign. Let's get ready for some electricity. Cruz, he is your green wrestler, Piccinini in the red. Hometowns for Cruz, Allentown, Pennsylvania. His brother Randy was also an All-American at Lehigh. Piccinini from Ward Melville, a four-time state champion. Mentioned in the state of New York. Ward Melville on Long Island. Piccinini, the Big 12 champion. Nice shot. Nice shot. Can he finish here? He's got to come up. He's got to come up with that leg motion. Got to give motion. Oh, and he almost, oh! Can he tilt? He'll get two. That was smart. Piccinini gets away with just giving up two. He could have been very easily got, given up four or five. So Cruz with an early 2-0 advantage. And it's a shame because Piccinini had a beautiful single leg up in the air and just got like a, almost a half cut back. It wasn't quite a cut back. Piccinini trying to escape. They'll give him the point, he got it. And he got it, that was good work on the edge. This is gonna be an exciting match, I could feel it. Final 15 seconds, opening period. Final seconds. It looks like that's the way we'll move into the second period. It'll be Cruz's choice. Piccinini going down. Get that other point tied up. He's got, he's got to get out in that 30 seconds. You know, he wants to keep conscious of, of riding time, so he's got to get out within 30 seconds. Even if he doesn't, he really needs a takedown to win this match regardless. So Cruz on top. <laughs> Cruz still has a grip. Now Piccinini trying to roll over to his feet and out of bounds before the escape. Got a senior versus a sophomore. Cruz, a senior, Piccinini, a sophomore. You know, Piccinini wants to win it all this year, and this would be a great win for him on his resume. Cruz, again, NCAA uh, champ last year. He went 5-0 and at the NCAAs. Oh, Piccinini stopped him. He's got the cradle, but he stopped him. He might get his pin right here if he could break that. Trying to turn him. Oh, and Piccinini gets, back gets points. He gets the reversal. He's getting back points right now. Piccinini in a big spot. Cruz trying to hold on for dear life. Right now, Nick Piccinini needs to stay right where he is because he's still got that cradle locked up, Cruz. One minute to yes, go. Yes, and he breaks it. Unbelievable. Now let's see how many points he got out of it. Seven to two, Piccinini up. And let me tell you something, Piccinini was in trouble right there. He had that, Cruz had that cradle locked up. He rolls through with it, and you're looking at a possible pin or seven two the other way. Amazing. So a seven two advantage. What an impressive match. What an impressive turn of events. 
think about the talent level of Nick Piccinini. He took fourth last year. He's a sophomore. He's an All-American as a freshman. Comes in in the All-Star match against the national champion, the returning reigning national champion, yep. and he's up 7-2 to two going into the third period. I mean, Piccinini is a stud. When you are one of the best of the best, I don't care whether you are 14 years old, 18 years old, 22, there's never fear. You don't look at the other wrestler and go, this guy's better than me. You go, I want to beat you because people think you're better than me. Don't ever count Darian Cruz out, no though. No way. Darian Cruz, he didn't become NCAA champion and beat some of the best guys in the country. You know, not being capable up until the last second of every single match Woo! beating you. Sweet move by Cruz. He'll get two. I mean, just like that. It was on cue, Nick. So now 60 seconds. Cruz will let him go. That point isn't as important to him. Looks up, surveys the land. Let's see what Cruz can do. Piccinini can use that really, really nice knee pull. He hits a nice knee pull to the right side. If he can get in there, he can waste, he can eat up some seconds there with 40 seconds left in the match. Piccinini up, eight to four. You could tell Cruz is trying to seconds. set him up. Yeah, Cruz wants to come up with a big move right now. And I don't think that's the way to do this. I think he should have, with 45, 50 seconds left, should have tried to get that quick takedown rather than come up with a home run. Which at this point he basically needs. Absolutely. 20 seconds. At 20 seconds left. Nick Piccinini, this is, he's going to give up one. He's going to give up one. So it's 8-5. Now 10 Pitch seconds. Piccinini's got to be smart here. Looks like he's going to. Just goes off the mat. Two seconds left. They move the clock back up to five they now. They give him five, they give him five seconds. This is going to be the biggest win of the night so far. Even though it's not an upset upset, it really is an upset. Piccinini pulls off a big win at 125 pounds. Unbelievable, great match by Piccinini. The sophomore from Oklahoma State upsets the senior from Lehigh, the NCAA champ, eight to five. Just like that, a huge four-point hold. Again, folks, you see three officials officiating here on the freestyle bout. Two of three officials must agree for the points to be. Your awarded. green wrestler is Drew Foster from Northern Iowa. Renda is red from NC State. All right, let's give you some of the particulars on these two. Renda from Brandywine in Topton, Pennsylvania. Foster. Went to high school at Mediapolis in Burlington, Iowa. A little bit of a feeling out process early. You know, when you're wrestling guys of similar talent or guys that are at this level, you can't open up too quick. It's like a chess match, Keith. You gotta go after, you gotta set a guy up, you gotta look for your shots, and you can't be foolish. But like I was saying before, these guys are no stranger to the big stage. They're both NCAA All-Americans. You know, Render, a three-time NCAA qualifier and an All-American, and a Midlands finalist. And Midlands is one of the best and baddest tournaments in the country every year. He was a finalist, got to the finals of that tournament. Best of the best, we said it. A little bit more than a minute into this match between the two 184s, Renda and Foster. I think that the interesting thing about these two guys, they actually went to the same high school, which is pretty much amazing. Still nothing, now we get our oh, first points. Foster on top. Kid from Burlington, Iowa. Now, can he ride out for the final? Well, it'll end up being 20 seconds. Still has the clench, still has him. And still control, so five seconds to go. And no escape point. If you're Renda, how quickly do you have to shoot out of this? I mean, you gotta go. You gotta go. You wanna get this point. This is a big point. 
Excellent job by Foster to hold on. So Renda will choose down. All right, so now Renda chooses down. How, how long, if you're coaching Foster, do you want him to try to hold him down? Well, you want to try to get that riding time. You want to try to get that 30 seconds, uh, then cut him. But, uh, and, and vice versa, you know, if you, you, you want to get out. You, you don't want to give up that one point riding time. So, want to get out right away. If your, specialty, if your specialty is the top and you're a top guy and you're a turner, you, you could turn people and get points on top. You want to hold them and you want to keep them down. Um, if that's not your forte, you still want to get that point riding time, get your riding time in, and then cut them and go from your feet. 14 seconds into the second. Foster still has a grip, puts him back down on the mat. Nice little switch attempt. Brenda can't get away from Foster. Oh. Can he reverse? He'll get one for the escape. Nice little try play, try by the up so nicely. <laughs> he almost went over the top of him. Needless to say, throughout this evening, we are going to see some skilled athletes. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You talk about great athletes in college, you know, looking at these basketball players and these football players and these track athletes. You know, a lot of times people don't realize these are some of the best college athletes in the United States of America. And we're watching them here tonight. Couple of thousand fans are in attendance as well at the historic Jadwin Gym, campus of Princeton University. Still a 2-1 advantage for Foster. For the most part, these two have gone back and forth at each other. 11 late two points in the opening period. One escape point, now a reversal, and it'll be a 3-2 advantage for Renda. He's got that leg in, let's see if he can crack that hip. Let's see if Renda can crack that up, get some back points out of it. So Renda takes him down, now has him on the mat. Now right here, he's knocking down some, some uh, you know, riding time. And it's also, you got six seconds left in the period here, so that was a really good takedown for him at the end of this period, giving some momentum going into the third period. Yeah, real nice turnaround there. Final period coming up. Foster starts down. Both wrestlers looked up at the clock quickly. Brenda. Still on the back of Foster. You know, Renda has to be careful too because if Foster gets to his feet again and Renda has his leg in, now they can caution him also. Tough ride here by Renda. Foster's got to move on bottom. He's got about 45 seconds left. He's got to make an attempt. He's got to do something on bottom. I know it's difficult with the leg in, and I know it's very tough, and a lot of times, especially, he's riding parallel. He's got to come off to the side. He's got to make it look good, Renda, just like he's doing right now. Renda also has a good grip of Foster's right hand. Now another stall warning. And a stall against Foster. One point on the board for Renda. So it is a stall against Foster. Now he trails 4-2. It's very difficult position to get up from. You know, when a guy's good with legs, it's very difficult on bottom. But that's why you have to win at the whistle. You can't wait to get in this position and try to get out of it, especially if a guy this is for ten. Final seconds, and that'll do it. Pete Renda takes it 4-2. Pretty impressive victory for Renda. It's the main event coming up at 174.
two sophomores, Mark Hall from Penn State, a two-time junior world champion, NCAA champion. That's Mark Hall taking on Arizona State sophomore, Zahid Valencia. Hall came out on the winning side, goes on to win an NCAA title as a freshman. Valencia comes back and takes third. So right here, here we go. We're in for a big treat right now. This is the sequel. Hall, your green wrestler in the blue singlet. Valencia, the red. We are underway. And it was amazing to watch Valencia's nice little drag by Valencia, but it was amazing to watch his run until he got to the semifinals. He was just handling guys, and he was work. He was just outworking. It looked like a man of versus boys, and and he was only a freshman. Right. Accolades on both sides for both of them. Talk about high school accomplishments. Valencia grew up out in Bellflower, California, three-time state champion on the Hall side from Apple Valley High School. Helped lead his team to six consecutive state championships. At one point, he won 171 consecutive matches, 189 career pins, 277 wins. Decorated. Legendary. That's legend. That's a legendary high school career right there. Two-time junior world champion Hall. He is one of the rising stars on the scene for 2020, 2024, those Olympic cycles. Valencia in the same boat. He's in that mix. So, you know, these guys might be seeing a lot of each other the next three, four years. <laughs> Valencia, depending on what publication you are reading, is ranked number two or number three coming into the season at 174 pounds. This could be a big statement. Valencia could make a big statement here by knocking him off, knocking Hall off, and getting back that, that loss at the NCAAs and also getting that ranking. You know, you know, I know this is an exhibition, but it would, it would do wonders for his, his, uh, his ranking if he could get this win. Minute 10 to go, opening period. See now the difference between this match and a few of the earlier ones. We're scoreless two minutes in, but there's still a lot of action. No doubt about it. These guys know each other. And Valencia is very tough, very, very tough to wrestle because he's so long. I mean, he goes down on his leg. You could have nice little duck attempt by Hall. Valencia could be down on his legs. He could be three, four feet away from you and kind of just half, maybe two, three inch reach. Boom, and he gets in on an ankle. Yeah, Valencia looks like he has at least four to five inches on Hall. Not about it, but Hall's just, oh, nice shot. Nice shot, Valencia, can he finish it? 30 seconds. Hall gets the leg around the other way. Look at Still the composure. Here, but wow. Look at the composure on Hall. He just has so much composure. It's what you'd expect from two guys that will continue to have all American careers. Final 10 seconds, opening period. You see the clock winding down. Let it go out, and we'll move to the second period. Green wins. See what Hall decides. Hall will go down. Well, you know what? It's <laughs> the NCAA title is going to go through Hall at this weight. So Valencia has got a, you know, the advantage to this, to taking this match. Valencia has an opportunity to feel Hall again, get in there, wrestle him again, because no matter what happens right here, it's. It's hard to keep beating the same guy over and over and over again. You pick up little intricacies. Hall does escape, get the point. You get, you know, you pick up little intricacies of the wrestler. You feel more confident when you wrestle him, and the pressure becomes more and more on the winning wrestler. And so this is a great match for Valencia, but it also gives Hall the same opportunity to kind of feel him again and know what he's to expect, you know, later on in the year. So a one nothing advantage for the sophomore from Penn State. The women's match is done on the other mat. Everyone is focused now on this. Two of the top wrestlers in America, and they're young too, just sophomores. 
You can purchase these commemorative t-shirts for the All-Star Classic in the West End Sponsor section of the gym. And again, we want Inside to of 50 seconds now. Still a 1-0 advantage for Hall. Every time Valencia tries to shoot, he can't get in. You, you know, it's just it's just Hall. You know, Hall Are you surprised has, by that or no? You know, not really because after seeing, I mean, well, uh, it's hard to say I'm not surprised because Valencia just destroys people and gets in on just about everyone else. So to see him not being able to get in on Hall is, is pretty, it's pretty, <laughs> Pretty unbelievable. I mean, it you, shows you, you the it. talent of Hall. But, but but that's exactly where I was going with this. It shows you just how good Mark Hall is. I mean, to make it look like he's just completely shutting down Valencia's offense. And I'll do it for period two. Valencia, I'm sure, will choose down and try to escape, try to even it up at one. He does. Hall still has a clutch, and he's clear, so it's 1-1. Here we go, two minutes left, Keith. I can't wait to see the end of this one. Somebody's gonna have to score to win now. Valencia so, has definitely been more of the aggressor, even though he hasn't been able to get in. I agree. Nice. Oh, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> Anyone else Hall's hitting that inside chip gets but Valencia is so tall, he jacked him up. He couldn't get the leg, he couldn't get the leverage to get him down with that inside trip. You heard the crowd. They thought they were about to see something. Well, let me tell you, Hall hits that on 98% of the guys he, he, you know, he gets it on. 50 seconds into this third period. Still tied up at one, Mark Hall, Zahid Valencia. Mark Hall is very explosive. He hasn't really done a lot offensively except for that attempt at an inside leg trip. But he's very explosive and he can score quickly. So Valencia has to be focused and has to, has to concentrate. Both wrestlers stood up for a moment. 40 seconds. Little shot, still nothing doing. Now 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Valencia got it, gets the two. Unbelievable, beautiful. And people don't score on Hall that way. He almost got out of it. And he was dead to rights and he Ooh. almost still got out of it. Unbelievable, Valencia has just got to hold him. He's got to stay strong here. I would try to end the match on top. Don't give Hall the opportunity to get a point. Be a point down with 10 seconds left and do something big and win at the whistle, at the buzzer. You know, hold him down, keep him down. Valencia leading 3-1, 15 seconds. Give up a stalling. All right, so he gives up the point, it's 3-2. Now Hall needs to be the aggressor, final seconds. Hall tries to shoot, can't get in. Valencia holds him at bay, final seconds. This is a big win for Valencia. He avenges the loss from the NCAA a year ago or back in March. Unbelievable, beautiful win by Valencia. Redemption for Valencia, the sophomore from Arizona State. Outlasts Mark Hall, three to two in our final match of the day. Couldn't ask to go out in a better way.